Have you ever experienced having an unsettling feeling while walking home at night? Maybe you've been made uneasy by a stranger on the bus ride home. Or maybe someone wouldn't take no for an answer while you're left alone with them. We all experience situations that give us the feeling of being unsafe, and the only thing that keeps us from getting hurt is our instinct. Most acts of violence are predictable, and there are signs that help us identify it with more accuracy. Our gut alerts us when there's a need to escape by sending a queasy feeling through our bodies. You hear a lot of people talk about books that are able to save your life. In the case of The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker, that statement is literally true. It is a self-help book which aims to teach us how we can use your gut instinct to avoid pain, trauma, and violence. Here are the top seven lessons from Gavin De Becker's The Gift of Fear. Lesson one, practice using intuition. Call it a hunch, call it instinct, or even a sixth sense. Whatever name you use for it, intuition is one, if not the most vital way in which we can protect ourselves from impending danger. People experience intuition in multiple ways. Whether it's a dream that woke you up in the night, or even an overwhelming sense of fear, these feelings are critical, and it would be wise to not ignore them. Ignoring your intuition or the warning signs can sometimes even have life-threatening consequences. In fact, your dreams can often accurately present you with an intuitive sense of upcoming danger. Lesson 2. Be aware of forced teaming. Sometimes it's hard to imagine that people have the worst intentions. Most often than not, we as humans are convinced that most people are good, that they have good intentions. However, we've all experienced some form of betrayal. For instance, how many of us have experienced getting cheated on in a relationship? You trust your partner to never commit such a terrible act of betrayal, but it happens. Or how many of you have shared sensitive information with a trusted friend, only to find out that that friend used it against you later on? Again, you trust that your friend would respect you in the personal stories you share, but people aren't always good. If we experience such betrayal from our friends and loved ones, is it still so hard to believe that a criminal would use a similar tactic? There's even a name for such a scheme. It's what they call force teaming. Lesson 3. Be mindful of the warning signs. Criminals will use a variety of tactics to convince you to trust them. For instance, those who wish to deceive you will also use a simple technique called too many details. When people are telling the truth, they don't fear being doubted. However, when a person is telling a lie, even though the lie sounds credible to you, it doesn't sound convincing enough to them, so they keep talking. By offering up too many details, the criminal tries to distract their victim from the obvious and gain the victim's trust. This causes the victim to lose sight of one simple context, that the person is an absolute stranger. Criminals will use an unsolicited promise to gain their victim's trust. Promises are normally used to convince us of an intention, but they are never guaranteed. You should look at all unsolicited promises with skepticism and ask yourself the question, why does this person have the need to convince me? Lesson 4. Notice the warning signs in the office. Violence in the workplace is not an isolated incident, nor is it rare. Losing a job can be as traumatic as the loss of a loved one. However, there's no support and condolences for these kinds of loss. While the rate of incidents has increased over the years, the factors that come with workplace violence have largely remained the same. Lesson 5. Break the cycle of abuse. The story of domestic violence is all too familiar. The murder victim suffered violence at the hands of her spouse for a long time, maybe for years or even decades. Perhaps the woman even reported to the police on a few occasions and took measures to protect herself by putting out a restraining order or buying a gun. But in the end, the violence gets out of hand and she tragically loses her life. Lesson 6. Master the two rules of fear. Rule number one is that the very fact that you fear something is strong evidence that it is not going to happen. Fear isn't telling us what is happening now, but rather it tells us that we should worry about what is coming next. The second rule states that what you fear is rarely what you think you fear, but what you link to fear. Think of anything in which you felt intense fear and link it to each of the possible outcomes. Lesson 7. Carry out your own salvation. Each person possesses the gift of fear designed to help save their life when they're faced with danger. It's important to listen to your gut and follow your instinct when you feel that something isn't right. In conclusion, the book The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker maintains that violence can be avoided, that every human being has a mechanism that warns us of danger that allows us to get to safety. That mechanism is called fear. It's the gift that helps us stay safe. Fear functions to save ourselves from danger. Ultimately, this book teaches us how to use fear in order for it to be effective in empowering our natural instincts. We'll be able to avoid violence in the future if we listen to our fear without hesitation. Do you listen to your gut feeling? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my new content. You can also get a free copy of the audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.